Japan's Ministry of Defense has announced the country's the officials call it a game changer, a weapon so powerful. Electromagnetic railgun. What if Japan just achieved what the United States couldn't? What if a weapon once thought impossible, one that fires metal projectiles at nearly seven times the speed of sound, was no longer science fiction? And what if this wasn't just a test, but the beginning of a new arms race across the Pacific? For decades, the electromagnetic railgun was the holy grail of naval warfare, a weapon so advanced that it could launch a projectile faster than any explosive shell, farther than any missile, and at a fraction of the cost. The United States tried for years and gave up. China showed off prototypes, but Japan just quietly did it. In 2025, Japan installed a working railgun on a warship. And it's not a dream anymore. It's operational. The moment that changed everything. When Japan's Ministry of Defense revealed that the Maritime Self-Defense Force had successfully mounted an electromagnetic railgun onto the test ship JS Oikitsa, military analysts worldwide took notice. For years, Japan's development had been happening behind the scenes, with little funding, few public updates, and almost no fanfare. But the test firing changed everything. Unlike traditional cannons, which use chemical propellants, the railgun uses pure electromagnetic energy. Two parallel rails generate a magnetic field that accelerates a metal projectile to insane velocities, up to Mach 7. That's over 8,500 kilometers per hour. At that speed, a projectile could travel from Tokyo to Yokohama in about 10 seconds. What makes this moment so historic isn't just that Japan made it work. It's that it did so when even the most powerful militaries like the US couldn't. Why Japan built it? The world Japan lives in today is not the world of post-war pacifism. Its neighbors, China and North Korea, have changed the game entirely. China's rapid military buildup, its growing fleet of warships, and the development of hypersonic glide vehicles have created an arms race in East Asia. North Korea's missile tests now occur with increasing frequency, often crossing over Japan's skies. For Japan, a country constitutionally restricted from offensive warfare, the railgun represents the perfect defense weapon. It doesn't violate the constitution. It's purely defensive. Yet it proves the kind of protection that conventional systems can't. A railgun can intercept missiles, aircraft, and even hypersonic threats. It fires projectiles that don't rely on explosive payloads, just kinetic force. At Mach 7, even a lump of metal becomes a guided thunderbolt. The Japanese government realized something the rest of the world was starting to forget. Energy-based kinetic weapons could level the playing field in a world dominated by missiles. How it works. So how does this weapon actually function? Inside the railgun, two conductive rails are connected to a massive power source. When electricity is sent through the rails, a magnetic field forms, creating what engineers call a Lorentz force. This force pushes the projectile forward at incredible acceleration, tens of thousands of Gs. Unlike a missile, there's no chemical explosion, no rocket fuel, no expensive guidance system. The projectile is just a solid hunk of metal, accelerated by electricity. And that's where Japan's breakthrough lies, energy efficiency and durability. Earlier American and Chinese attempts faced one major issue, the rails would erode or melt after just a few shots. The Japanese prototype solved that with advanced composite materials and energy control systems that minimize heat and stress. By 2023, Japan's defense agency had reached a key milestone, a 20 megajoule firing system that could launch a projectile at over 2,200 meters per second. To put that into perspective, that's twice the muzzle velocity of the most powerful naval guns ever built. In simple terms, this weapon can strike a target hundreds of kilometers away with pinpoint precision, using only electricity. The power of speed. Why is speed everything? Because speed equals energy. 
the kinetic energy of a projectile increases with the square of its velocity. That means doubling the speed multiplies the energy by four. At Mach 7, even a small projectile carries the impact force of a missile. This is why Japan's railgun matters. It's not just about range, but about raw, controllable power. Imagine a ship defending itself from a hypersonic missile. Traditional missile interceptors like the SM-6 can cost millions of dollars per shot, and even then, success isn't guaranteed. A railgun, on the other hand, can fire a projectile for tens of thousands of dollars. Cheap, fast, and sustainable. Every pull of the trigger costs about the same as a car. Every shot can neutralize a million-dollar missile. And since it doesn't rely on explosives, there's no danger of ammunition detonating on board. Everything is powered by the ship's onboard energy, clean, efficient, and almost limitless in supply. What makes Japan different? When the U.S. Navy pursued its railgun program in the 2000s, it poured over half a billion dollars into development. Tests looked promising at first, projectiles reaching Mach 6 and beyond. But the railgun suffered catastrophic erosion after a handful of shots. Cooling systems failed. Power requirements were enormous. By 2021, the U.S. quietly shelved the project. It had become too costly, too unreliable, and too complex to deploy on active ships. Japan, however, took a different route. Rather than chasing extremes, it focused on practical engineering. Smaller prototypes, manageable energy loads, and step-by-step -step improvements. The Japanese didn't try to leap ahead. They simply built steadily until it worked. And when it finally did, they didn't just announce success. They installed it on a ship. This is where Japan's engineering philosophy shines. Precision over power. Endurance over spectacle. A weapon for the Pacific Age. The ocean defines Japan's defense strategy. It's surrounded by water, threatened from every direction, east by China's navy, north by North Korea's missiles, and south by territorial disputes in the South China Sea. Traditional missile defenses, like the Aegis and Patriot systems, are effective but expensive. Each interceptor missile can cost millions, but a railgun can fire thousands of rounds before maintenance. That's a complete shift in how naval warfare can be fought. Imagine a Japanese destroyer sailing through the Pacific, able to fire Mach 7 projectiles at incoming missiles, enemy ships, or aircraft, without worrying about ammunition costs or magazine explosions. This is the dream of sustainable defense, a weapon that uses electricity as ammunition. And because Japan's Navy already operates advanced power systems on ships like the Maya-class destroyers, integrating a railgun into their future fleet isn't far-fetched. It's inevitable. Beyond defense. While the railgun is framed as defensive, it also changes offense. A projectile that can travel hundreds of kilometers at hypersonic speeds doesn't just intercept, it can strike. That means coastal defense batteries, ship-to-ship -ship combat, and even anti-satellite potential in the future. Without relying on guided missiles, Japan could, in theory, project force across vast distances almost instantly. That's why defense experts are watching closely. Because railguns blur the line between defensive and offensive warfare. And for a nation with constitutional limits on military aggression, that's a delicate balance. Japan insists this technology is meant for protection. But power, once created, rarely stays in one form. The global arms race awakens. Japan's progress has reignited global interest in electromagnetic weapons. The United States, despite shelving its own program, has resumed studying small-scale variants. China claims to have tested a railgun at sea in 2018, though little proof exists. Russia has hinted at similar ambitions. But right now, Japan stands as the only country with a working, ship-mounted railgun prototype. This has geopolitical consequences. It signals that Japan is entering a new era of defense capability, one where it can defend itself without depending entirely on American missile shields. It's a quiet but unmistakable message. Japan is becoming self-reliant in cutting-edge military technology. 
and the timing couldn't be more important. The Indo-Pacific is heating up. China is expanding. Taiwan is vulnerable, and alliances are being tested. A working railgun gives Japan leverage, not through aggression, but through deterrence. The future of warfare. So, what happens now? In the near future, Japan's railgun could become part of a layered defense network. Combined with traditional missile systems and laser interceptors, it creates a web of overlapping protection, each system covering the other's weaknesses. Missiles are effective but expensive. Lasers are precise but weather-dependent. Railguns are cheap, fast, and durable. Together they form an almost impenetrable shield. That's the vision. A nation defended not just by steel and soldiers, but by science itself. But there are still challenges. The power requirements for sustained fire remain enormous. Even Japan's advanced ships can only store so much energy. Continuous firing generates extreme heat, risking rail damage over time. Cooling systems must evolve, and energy storage must expand before large-scale deployment becomes practical. Still. Every major innovation in warfare started with small steps. The first airplanes were fragile. The first tanks were slow. The first computers were the size of rooms. The railgun may still be experimental, but it's functional. And that's all it takes to change the future. The shockwave ahead. The railgun isn't just another weapon. It's a shift in physics applied to warfare. It represents the next phase of human ingenuity in combat systems. Energy weapons that rely on electromagnetism, not explosives. It's also symbolic. A nation once known for post-war pacifism has built one of the most futuristic weapons on Earth. Not to dominate, but to defend. But that defense, ironically, might trigger an arms race that redefines security in the Pacific. As China accelerates its naval expansion and the U.S. rethinks its technological priorities, Japan's railgun stands as both an achievement and a warning. The moment it fired its first Mach 7 shot, a new chapter in military history began. Because whoever masters electromagnetic weaponry first won't just win battles, they'll control the pace of future wars. A New Balance of Power in the 20th century, nuclear deterrence defined power. In the 21st century, it may be electromagnetic supremacy. The railgun is the ultimate equalizer. Cheap, powerful, and difficult to counter. No missile defense can fully stop it. No explosive can outrun it. It travels so fast that it changes what distance even means in combat. For Japan, this is the dawn of a new doctrine technological defense through energy dominance. And for the rest of the world, it's a wake-up call that innovation isn't limited to superpowers anymore. The age of purely kinetic warfare may be ending. The era of electromagnetism has begun. Japan didn't make the biggest railgun. It didn't spend the most money. It didn't rush to show off to the world. It just built the one that works. And that makes all the difference. While the U.S. hesitated, China postured, and others watched, Japan moved silently and fired the first shot of a new technological era. A railgun that can strike at Mach 7, powered not by gunpowder, not by rockets, but by pure electricity. Quiet, efficient, terrifyingly fast. The future of warfare has a new sound, and it's not an explosion. It's the crackle of energy ripping through metal. Japan just pulled the trigger on tomorrow. If this breakthrough truly marks the dawn of a new military era, what happens next could change the entire balance of power across the Pacific. Do you think Japan's railgun will stay a weapon of defense or become something far greater? Share your thoughts below, because the future of warfare isn't coming someday. It's already here, and it's moving at Mach 7. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you never miss the next deep dive into the world's most advanced military tech. Your support keeps us exploring the truth behind the headlines, one powerful story at a time. Stay blessed and stay curious.